Hello, welcome back to HackMyControlSystem.com. My name is Nate and today we'll be going over Modbus serial communication, the different variants, wiring configurations, and kind of dissect the Modbus frame structure. We'll also show you how to configure one of these Arduinos as a Modbus slave. So you probably heard a little bit about Modbus, but where did it come from and how did it evolve? Modicon Bus, or Modbus, is an OSI Layer 7 application protocol that was first developed by Modicon in 1979. Twenty years later, Modicon, now Schneider Automation, published an open Modbus TCP IP specification, thus increasing its adoption in Ethernet networks. In 2004, Schneider transferred the rights to the Modbus organization. Although there are many control system specific protocols on the market, Modbus has stayed the course and, as it's an open standard, you can expect it to be utilized in future Internet of Things solutions. Serial-based Modbus, specifically Modbus RTU, is best suited for remote input-output devices and motor control centers. In January 2016, Automation World and Moxa published their Ethernet and Wireless in the Plant survey results. Modbus came in at third place, with 52% of respondents using Modbus TCP, led by Ethernet TCP IP, and Ethernet Industrial Protocol. This was a six-point increase from the previous 2012 results. Internal plant usage aside, a subsequent report published by SCADA Strangelove in July of 2016 found that Modbus still accounted for 7.4% of all industrial control systems directly connected to the Internet. There's no doubt that Modbus is here to stay, Heck, a Google search of building monitoring system Modbus and interface search terms results in over 2,000 hits. Cisco's Smart Grid Substation Automation Design and Implementation Guide includes Modbus, and I suspect that Modbus popularity will continue to soar as its usage is increased within the home IoT automation space. Since it sits on top of the OSI model, it can be transported by many different mechanisms. We will now discuss Modbus transmitted over serial communications. The most common serial form of Modbus is Modbus RTU, either in EIA-485 or EIA-232 configurations. Modbus RTU transmits binary data, ones and zeros. Transmitting binary data is more compact than its ASCII equivalent. To ensure error checking, RTU leverages a cyclic redundancy check or CRC. This is similar to what you would find in TCP error correction. Modbus ASCII is similar to RTU, except it uses ASCII characters instead of binary. Additionally, ASCII leverages a longitudinal redundancy check, or LRC, instead of RTU's CRC. The frame fields are nearly identical, with the exception of a one-character start field at the beginning. It will contain a colon, or 3A, in hexadecimal. As stated earlier, RTU is more popular than ASCII. However, open source code for both Modbus RTU and ASCII is available. Whether RTU or ASCII, serial communications typically occur over RS-232, 422, and 485 field bus configurations. The RS-232 standard was first introduced by the Electronic Industries Association, or EIA, in 1969. Be aware that you may hear RS-232, EIA-232, and even TIA-232, TIA for telecommunications, being used interchangeably. If you're bald like me, you probably grew up with one of these RS-232 cables. They have a 9-pin DB9 connector on each end. Um, the D-shaped connector was first ratified by the EIA in the RS-232C revision. They're useful for connecting older PLCs. Um, and some of the uh, PLCs you'll encounter, the older ones, like the Slick 503, uh, still use this type of connector. RS-232 supports point-to-point -point communication, meaning we're connecting two devices to each other, one on each end. Here you can see I have a DB25 to RS-232 serial modem cable. This uh, type of adapter, the DB25, can still be seen on some of the older uh, PLCs, if you can still find them, like the PLC4. Another Allen Bradley uh, uh, cable is the um, 232 to 8-pin mini DIN. This type of connector you'll find on Micrologic's 1500 and 1000 models. 
Now these RS-232 cables, uh, you know, are kind of short, so one thing I recommend having your gear bag is one of these uh, DB9 male-to-male -male gender changers. So essentially you can like connect two of these uh, cables together and give yourself a little bit more room, especially if you got a PLC over there and you got your laptop here, you need to find a workbench, etc. So just a little tip for you. Serial communications are half duplex, with RS-232 pushing around 20 kilobits per second. In response, the EIA published the RS-422 standard in the early 1990s, which increased the throughput to about 10 megabits per second. The next round of innovation was RS-485, which has the same speed as 422, however it's multi-drop instead of point-to-point. -point. This means you can now have approximately 32 nodes span across 4,000 feet, versus the earlier 1-to-1 -one -one master-to-slave RS-232 configuration that's limited to approximately 50 feet. Additionally, RS-45 comes in two varieties, 3-wire for half-duplex communications and 5-wire for full-duplex. Half-duplex is when one must either listen or transmit to avoid collisions. Full-duplex, seen in all modern network interface cards, allows the device to transmit and receive in parallel. Here's an example of RS-485 to DB9 adapter. The protruding wires will be twisted or shielded to minimize signal distortion. It should be noted that EA485 is used in other bus technologies, specifically Profibus DP and DH485. Modicon, the inventors of Modbus, had their own bus topology that transported their own proprietary version of Modbus called Modbus Plus. Modbus Plus isn't related to Modbus RT or ASCII. Instead, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network protocol that allows a system to communicate once it receives a passing token frame. It differs from the other Modbus communication protocols as Modbus Plus supports peer-to-peer -peer communication instead of the typical master-slave hierarchy. Communications occur over fiber optic and twisted pair. In order to connect a PLC to the bus, you would leverage a tap like this. You can attach the 9-pin DB9 connector to the PLC and attach this pseudo-vampire tap onto the field bus. If we open it up, we can see where the network trunk cable would pass through the tap and afford this drop cable connectivity to the bus. Ethernet, wireless, and fiber optic are slowly replacing serial field bus communications. An example of this migration is Cisco's converged plant-wide architecture. With Modbus RTU either being encapsulated within TCP or passed as Modbus TCP, the terminology changed slightly. The master is now referred to as a client with the slaves now called servers. If you get confused, think of the server as a web server, such as hackmycontrolsystem.com. You, or more accurately, your web browser, is the client telling the server what you want. Passing Modbus over modern networks can be accomplished in many ways. We have Modbus TCP IP, Modbus over TCP IP, Modbus over UDP, and Modbus RTU IP. So what does communication look like? On the top of the screen, we can see a complete Modbus frame or application data unit, ADU. In point-to-point -point configurations, we'll focus on the protocol data unit, or PDU, which is green in color. Within the PDU, we have a function code and a data section. There are three types of PDUs, Modbus request, Modbus response, and Modbus exception response. Within each PDU, you will have a function code. When a message is sent from a master to a slave device, the function code field tells the slave what kind of action to perform. Valid codes are in the range of 1 to 255 decimal. However, the range 128 to 255 are considered reserved and used for exception responses. Note that the function code 0 is not valid. The data field contains additional information related to the function code and ranges from 0 to 252 bytes. For example, a write coil function code would include the coil number and the value to write within the data field. Caution. Modbus uses a big Endian representation for addresses and data items. Also remember that the Modbus addressing model should start at 0. However, some non-standard deployments can start at 1. The PDU is encapsulated within the Application Data Unit, or ADU. Its leading field being a one-byte field for addressing. 
Regardless of the configuration, EIA 232 or 485, we can only have one master. But with EIA 485, we can now have up to 247 slaves. Each slave has a slave or unit ID. The Modbus unit ID is essentially its network address. The master does not have an address, which is interesting, as anyone who can connect to the network could read or write data to one or more slaves. Also note that the slave will respond with the unit ID of its own slave address. The trailing end of the ADU contains a 2-byte error checking method, whether a CRC for RTU or LRC for ASCII. All in all, we have 253 bytes for the PDU, plus the additional 3 bytes for the ADU, thus 256 bytes in total. Let's parse a Modbus RTU request frame and note the individual ADU fields. Here, we see a slave ID of 4, sending a function code of 8, which is a diagnostic function code, followed by some data, and a CRC for error checking. Now before we can transition to Modbus TCP, let's take a look at Modbus RTU being passed between a master and slave. In this example, I'll walk you through configuring an Arduino Mega as a slave with Modbus Matt acting as the master HMI. If you haven't used Arduino before, you'll need to download the IDE software specific to your operating system. In this example, we'll select a Windows installer. Accept the browser's security warning, as well as the Arduino's EULA agreement. The installation process is essentially a next install process. except the driver installation prompts. Once the installation process has completed, there will be an Arduino shortcut on your desktop. Go ahead and connect the Arduino to your Windows system via the I2C to USB cable. Double click the Arduino icon to open the sketch builder. Pardon the resolution, but we will need additional screen space. Additionally, we will interact minimally with the sketch builder. Our first step is to open the Windows Device Manager as we need to see which serial port our Arduino is connected to. You should see the Arduino located under ports. If driver installation failed, you'll more than likely see your device listed un under other devices. Note the serial or COM port for the Arduino, and this example is connected to COM port 3. Within the Sketch Builder, navigate the Tools board and se uh, select the Arduino Mega. By default, you may see an Arduino Uno displayed. Also ensure the sketch builder connects to your Arduino over the identified COM port. This can be changed under Sketch Builder's Tools Port Menu Options. Let's open the script. Be aware that this code is not mine as I have downloaded it from the referenced website. Furthermore, the code's author has a fantastic YouTube walkthrough that I recommend you view. All we need to do is copy the code and paste it in the Sketch Builder. Within Sketch Builder, press the right arrow icon to upload the file to your Arduino. Now that the Arduino is configured, we need to run Modbus Mat. The software is difficult to find given its age, and I noticed a few malicious sites hosting the file. The best place to find this is archived under the Wayback Machine. That URL and its virus total score is located within the code's comments. Just execute the file and click the top left icon to set the initial communication parameters. Under the port drop-down menu, select the previous COM port number. 
you can leave the serial baud rate settings alone. We will now essentially scan the bus and identify any live Modbus RTU devices by incrementally pulling their slave ID numbers, 1 to 255. Select the Extra tab. Note that we are starting at slave ID 1. Press the green magnifying icon to start scanning. The output at the bottom of the application reveals when the scan is running. Select the COM Monitor tab. We see our requests in blue. Note the response in black text with a slave ID of 11 in hex or 17 in decimal. Now we can return to the Modbus Poll tab, change our slave ID to 17, select Function Code 1, which is Read Coils, and press Start Polling. Note you may need to change the length to 5. The COM Monitor tab shows that we receive a response after each polling request. To modify the Arduino's values, connect a jumper cable from the Arduino's 5 volt power pin to digital pin 22. When this occurs, we see that our first address has a new value of 1. Now let's return and take a look at a PDU encapsulated within Modbus TCP. We can see the same schema encapsulated within a TCP IP packet. Note the red arrow pointing to a PDU, which is prefixed by a TCP Modbus application header. I have extracted bytes of the Modbus TCP IP ADU and annotated the individual fields of the MBAP header and the PDU. MBAP standing for Modbus Application Header. Within the MBAP header, we have the following fields. Transaction Identifier, and is used for synchronization between the server and client. Protocol Identifier, is always 2 null bytes 00, zero for Modbus. A Length field, informs us of the number of remaining bytes in the packet. Queries always have a length of 6 bytes or 0, 06 and hexadecimal. Unit identifier. It's the slave client address and ranges from 1 to 254. On TCP IP, the Modbus server is addressed using its IP address, therefore, the Modbus unit identifier is useless and the value 0xff in hexadecimal is used. We can parse a read input register's request and see all the fields within the ADU. Within it, you don't see a CRC, as Modbus TCP leverages TCP's inherent error correction mechanism. Note that this is different than Modbus over TCP, which keeps its own CRC 16 checksum encapsulated within the ADU. And that's an easy way to spot the difference. Within the Ethernet IP networks, the addressing will be passed via standard layer 2 and layer 3 addressing. By default, Modbus TCP is transmitted over TCP port 502. So let's cover the key takeaways from a cybersecurity perspective. Modbus is still a very relevant protocol and its adoption is increasing. Unfortunately, these devices are still being directly connected to the internet, thus increasing their exposure to attack. As the Modbus master does not have an address, it can easily be spoofed. However, for serial communications, you need to have access to the network. As such, physical security should be a major focus. This includes personnel screening, locked PLC cabinets, and even video surveillance. Outside of error detection, this protocol has no authentication or replay protection, making interaction with Modbus devices quite trivial. This concludes this episode. We've a highlighted the difference between Modbus RTU, ASCII, and Modbus Plus. We briefly discussed the differences of RS-232, 422, and 485. We dissected a Modbus frame, and I walked you through configuring Arduino as a slave. In the next episode, we'll use the information we just learned to help us understand Modbus communication over TCP IP. Hey, thank you for viewing 
please press the subscribe button below. Uh, note that all the references are in our show notes, and you can find that at hackmycontrolsystem.com. Thank you.